It is my birthday today. And uh, because it's my birthday, my driver's license expired. And because my driver's license expired, you know, if you go in the day after your driver's license expires, you have to take the driving test all over again. It's like you never had a driver's license, at least in some states. I don't know if it's that way here in D.C., but I'm, you know, I got caught in that trap in one of the states that I lived in once. I don't remember if it was Vermont or New Hampshire or Michigan, wherever it was. And I just swore I'm never going to do that again. And so my driver's license expired today. And so I went down to the DMV. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because uh, the primary elections in North Carolina just started. And those people are now exposed to these new voter ID laws. And the uh, and Michigan now has new voter ID laws. And uh, Wisconsin, I think, has been enjoined, has been stopped in, in Florida, but uh, they're trying. And, you know, Alec is pushing these things, right? Paul Weyrich fa famously said, you know, uh, uh, I don't want everybody to vote. In fact, in fact, you, got, you have to saw it. Hey, I don't have to say it. Here's Paul Weyrich saying it. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome, good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. So this is the guy who was running the Reagan campaign and who co-founded the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, which is pushing out legislation now to basically do the modern version of literacy tests. Literacy tests used to be you'd show up to vote, and if you were white, they would say, uh, who's the president of the United States? And you'd say, uh, Dwight Eisenhower. And they'd say, okay, cool, you can vote. And if you were black and you showed up, they'd say, okay, literacy test, please recite word for word the, uh, the, uh, the Gettysburg Address. And if you could pull that off, then they'd say, please recite the Constitution. I mean, you know, it was just like it was impossible. And... So why am I saying this? What does this have to do with my birthday? I got up early this morning. I woke up at 7.30 this morning, which is really early for me, because, I mean, we don't even get off the air until 8 o'clock. I, I don't get home typically until 9, 9.30. Um, uh, we have dinner. We set up the next morning's show. Louise, uh, uh, Louise, my work day is typically done around 10.30 or 11 o'clock, and we usually get to sleep around midnight. And And I woke up this morning, 7.30, because I wanted to get over and get my driver's license and get it done with because we our first show prep meeting is at 11.15 in the morning. We have a conference call with six people on it. And long before that, we've got to have our wiki filled out. We've got to have our page filled out with all the suggestions and ideas. And we've got to go through all the news stories and get ready for the day. This is That's for the TV show. And then the radio show comes at noon, uh, 45 minutes later. So I thought, okay, uh, the DMV opens at 8.45 or 8.30, and uh, I looked up the Washington, D.C. DMV page to find out what I needed to get to get a driver's license uh, or to renew my driver's license in D.C. And, and uh, to, uh, and which I really don't even need. I mean, I, I, I don't own a car. I haven't driven a car in years. When I'm out of town, I take taxis. When I'm in D.C., I either take the metro or if it's a you know really raining and a terrible day i take uber and i walk a lot and it's wonderful my blood pressure's gotten normal uh, it's you know but in any case i digress what i went through this morning to get my driver's license is what people in these voter id states are going to go through if they don't have voter id and they don't already have a driver's license and hundreds of thousands of them in each one of these states several hundred at least two hundred thousand in wisconsin at least six hundred thousand in north carolina uh don't have because like me they live in an urban area and they don't own a car so why bother getting a driver's license or uh, they're they're poor enough that they are you know there's no chance they're ever going to own a car or they live in an urban area and don't need a car, or they're disabled, or they're elderly, or they're college students. So they don't, you know, so they, they've got to go through. So you can, the form that I filled out, you had two little boxes at the top. One said uh, driver's license. The other said government-issued ID. 
So it, the, the, the requirements were identical. And I had read the requirements on the website when I was looking at what time the office opened. And I read it, and it said, you know, you've got to have, prove your Social Security number, and you've got to have two proofs of the, where you live and uh, some proof that you actually are a citizen of the United States. And so I pulled together my driver's license, which, was ex which expired today, or expires tomorrow, I guess. Expires at midnight tonight. Got my driver's license. I got my passport. I got my pilot's license. Now, your pilot's license ID number is your social security number, so it has my social security number on it. I got uh, my credit card statement from my bank, and it's one of the, I mean, you can't get a credit card from a little bank these days anyway, it's, uh, but the, the main one that we use for the, for the company was the one I got, and, and it's from one of the big banks, I'm embarrassed to admit. But anyhow, it's a credit card statement. And uh, I got my uh, utility bill and my, my slip rental bill for the boat for living down in the marina. And I thought, okay, I got everything I need. And so I go down to the DMV, and the first person, and I stand in line for 20, 30 minutes, and finally, and it wasn't too bad, finally I get up there, and the guy goes through everything, and he says, uh, you know, your pilot's license is, and your passport are not proof of your social security number. You actually have to show us a social security card or a tax return, a W-2 or a 1099 that has your social security number on it. Nothing else will work. So, you know, I, I, I live about 10 or 12 blocks from this place, about a mile away. So I walked back home and rummaged through my drawers and found my social security card, which I had gotten reissued when we lived in Portland back five years ago uh, because I had lost the one I got when I was 15 years old and went back the second time. Second time, another half hour in line, get up there, they look at it. My social security card only has one N on the end of my name, Hartman. The person who reissued it at the Social Security office screwed it up. I know the Social Security office has it right. I get the statements. I know the IRS has it right. The card was wrong. So they said, yeah, this won't work. Do you have anything else with your Social Security number on it? Well, I got my pilot's license, so that doesn't work. So um, I went back home and came back with something with my Social Security number on it. Then the question was... Uh, your residence. And so I said, well, here's my bank statement. And the woman said, this is a credit card statement, not a bank statement. And I said, it says right there, Bank of America, or whatever the name of the bank is. I don't want to name the bank, but the, the word bank is part of the name of the bank. And it said bank, and in big letters at the top, it says statement. And she said, I know the difference between a credit card statement and a bank statement, and this is a credit card statement, not a bank statement. And apparently you don't know the difference, and you can go home and get your bank statement and figure it out. I mean, pretty much just like that. So I went home and I got a bank statement and I came back for the fourth time to the DMV. Now just imagine, this is not people trying to keep me from getting a driver's license. This is the Tom Hartman Program. This is just, you know, people doing their jobs as well they think they should. Can you imagine, though, if I was in mostly white Lansing, Michigan, and I was black and I was trying to get an ID to vote? You know, my experience at the DMV, it's interesting. I, 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 I didn't end the story. Um, after uh, The fourth time when I went back, I now had my bank statement. I now had uh, uh, my tax statement. Um, I now, you know, I, I, everything conceivable, right? I had, I, was, I had this pile of paper. And going back for the fourth time, this is th we're three hours into this now. If I was not my own employer, you know, my boss can't fire me because I'm my boss. But, you know, three hours out of work, really? I think at least halfway through, maybe the second, third, fourth time, I would have said, screw it. If I'm just trying to do this to get an ID to vote, screw it. I need to go back to, you know, drywalling the, you know, houses or, or whatever I do for a living, you know. Um. So finally, the fourth time I got there, uh, uh, I got sent to a fourth person, a very nice guy, 
Actually, the first one was a man. The, the second, third were a woman. The fourth was a guy. Um, not that that has anything to do with it, but a uh, very nice guy who said, um, I, I just thought I would just try it out. I uh, see what happened. So I gave him my passport and my social security card with my name misspelled on it. And he said, oh, your, your social security card is, they dropped the N on the second N on your name. And I said, yeah, I got it reissued when I was in Portland. And I think the clerk just wasn't paying attention, but you know, the social security office has it right because they, you know, they, they stopped sending those statements out a couple of years ago, but they always had them everything right. And, you know, they take my taxes every year. And he laughed and he said, I'm sure they do. No problem for him. And then I handed him my credit card statement and said, here's my bank statement to show that I actually live where I live. And here's my utility bill. And he said, okay, fine. And, uh, you know, I gave my old driver's license and he copied the information off and said, is this all right? And I said, yes. And he took my credit card and I paid my 35 bucks for a new driver's license and, and uh, took a picture and did the vision test. And that was it. It was all done. It was all nice. And I didn't need any of the stuff that I'd gone back for three times. Now, in a way, this illustrates the danger of the arbitrary power of government, although, frankly, it's arbitrary power anywhere. I mean, I've had these kinds of very, very frustrating conversations where you get three different answers from three different people with health insurance companies probably 40 or 50 times in my life. I've had conversations like this with banks over the years. I have had uh, particularly mortgage brokers. Oh, you, you, you need to, we needed that, not that, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, and, and, and the typically, and, and I'd say probably about half the people who were in front of me in line, maybe two thirds of the people in front of me in line got turned away because they didn't meet some criteria. Just like I got turned away three out of four times or, you know, three times, three times. And then finally the fourth time I just gave him what I had originally come with and he took it. So there's a certain amount of arbitrary power or decision-making capability latitude inherent in any kind of bureaucracy, whether it's, whether it's the phone company or whether it's the DMV. But here's the thing that really baffles me. After we were all done, he scanned all the documents I brought. So the DMV now has, using their old Windows computers, in fact, the, 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 the screen in the waiting room had Internet Explorer on it, which the Department of Homeland Security says don't use, and it had a little thing down in the right-hand corner that said, there are updates available for this computer. I mean, it was right in the monitor that was telling us, you know, what time of day it was, and welcome to the DMV. Um, they have scanned my credit card record, my tax statement, my bank statement. Well, that's my credit card. They didn't, we didn't, didn't get to the bank statement. My driver's license, my passport. Uh... They, all of this stuff is now sitting in a government computer and so I'm thinking if I was a Republican how do you play this thing? Right? We don't want people to vote so we're going to force them into the DMV knowing that everybody hates the DMV it's a bureaucracy it's slow, it's a hassle I mean Actually, you know, the, the, the fourth person I've worked with there, and, and the first were very nice. Only one out of the four was at, uh, even slightly discourteous, and she was only discourteous when I told her, I tried to assert to her that my credit card statement was a bank statement because it, was a, it said statement in big letters at the top, and it said bank in big letters at the top, and, and she was having none of it. And I think she thought I was talking back to her and, you know, but anyhow, so if you don't want people to vote, force them into the DMV first. Number one barrier. But then you get into one of these weird arguments that's kind of like the death penalty argument. Because rich white guys had to go to the DMV too to get their ID. And the DMV is now storing all your personal information on a computer that's a government computer. Do you really want that done? It's sort of like, you know, if you don't trust the government, if you don't trust the post office, if you don't trust the DMV, if you don't trust 
then why would you trust capital punishment? It turns out 1.6% of the time, the person killed is completely innocent. 4.5% of the time, the person convicted and sentenced to death is completely innocent. The difference between the two are, the, in part, the ones where the guilt is ultimately questioned to the point where the person isn't executed. But it seems to me, having been through this, and now, you know, what's 400 to 600,000 people in North Carolina are going to have to go through this in order to get a government-issued ID. And a couple hundred thousand people in Michigan are going to have to go through this if they want to vote. I'm getting it. What a slick trick the Republicans have pulled off on this thing. You know? Yeah. Somebody wants to vote. We don't want them to vote. Hey. Send him to the DMV first. We'll be back.